This is Twit. Jewel bots. So what these are, are friendship bracelets. Oh, first I should say that I saw Sarah giving a presentation about this at uh, allthingsopen.org just a few weeks ago when I was uh, off in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. And I immediately went up to her after the presentation. I said, I have to have this on my show. And let me explain why. So these are uh, friendship bracelets that have four infinite color LEDs, full RGB LEDs, totally settable to any color in the rainbow, and a button, a magic button, they call it, a master button. Mag magic button? Magic button. And so what these are, are they're, they're basically Arduinos that are programmable. And so uh, this this uh, originally was a Kickstarter project. Now it's fully available. You go to the website, you can buy me all you want. But it's basically getting teen and preteen girls programming in C++. This is so cool. They're programming because they want to make it so that when, you know, when I'm around, oh, they have a uh, Bluetooth too, so they can tell when their friends are around. So they can say in the code, when my friend is nearby, both of our bracelets are going to glow blue. And so they know each other is nearby. And you can push on a button and have it send messages to the, your friends that are nearby. This is really freaking cool. Uh, yeah, so Joel Boss is something that we've been working on for about three and a half years now. Um, they're smart, programmable friendship bracelets designed to inspire girls to pursue careers in engineering. Um, and like you said, we have eight-year-olds writing C++, which is the most uh, amazing and humbling thing uh, experience you can imagine. Awesome. And how did this come about? So um, I've been a software engineer for 16 years. Um, and uh, I was five years into my career before I worked with another woman. It was another five years after that um, until I worked with another. And uh, I've really enjoyed this career. I love making the Internet. You know, like that. what an amazing thing to do and what an amazing thing to be a part of. Um, and so I've always been looking for a way to find... Um, to inspire just more girls to want to get involved. Um, and uh, I started with women. I started teaching um, classes to adult women, um, started an organization called Girl Develop It. Um, and one thing I heard from our students all the time was that they didn't know what an engineer was until they got to college. Um, and by the time they... Uh, by the time they got there, it was too late. You know, they were like, oh, I don't know anything about this. And now they work next to a programmer that makes four times what they do. And they're like, man, I want to do that so bad. So I started talking to the men that I worked with about, you know, when did you find this career? How did you get inspired to do this? And overwhelmingly, what I heard from them was um, during their preteen years, they discovered gaming or they discovered an open source project or something similar that really got them into it. So I knew we had to target preteens. Um, when did you both start programming? Oh, I started, uh, I started when I was nine. So yeah. Yeah. Same right? here. Yeah. I, I started with a, uh, uh, you know, basic on a TRS-80 color computer. So, <laughs> yep. Yeah. I was 11. Um, and, uh, when I discovered BBSs and I got super into them. So, um, my first idea was that we'd make a bracelet that changed color to match our outfit. I was like, girls will love this. They love outfits. Um, and so I worked with a friend uh, that went to ITP, who, um, which is a, um, an NYU campus here. Uh, she made a prototype of a bracelet that changed color to match her outfit. We brought that to schools, um, you know, to test it, to see uh, what uh, the reaction was, if it was something girls liked, if it was something they were into. Um, and... They were they were excited to see the bracelet, but the functionality they're like that's kind of lame. Um, and so we started talking to them about like what could get you excited, right? Because like we we didn't care what we built, we just wanted to make something that would get them excited. Because um, if you look at things like Minecraft or MySpace or Neopets, they're all situations where kids find this thing, and they fall in love with it, and then they figure out that they can program it, and they're like, um, you know, how do I? How do I do that? I, I'll teach myself and kids teach themselves. So we wanted to make that artificially. So we um, heard from them, like the more we talked to them, the more they talked about friendship. It's the most important thing to them, you know, during those years. Um, and uh, so we were like, what if we make a friendship bracelet that lights up when your friends are nearby? And that's when they started really freaking out. They would be like, oh, my yeah. God, I have to have that. It's so important. So that's how we knew that was what we needed to make. 
And and so the project specifically, I think I got it right. You did a Kickstarter first to have this happen, and then uh, you uh, this is now moved just being a full fully available product. Yeah, um, uh, a consumer product, uh, man, so crazy. Um, we did a Kickstarter in 2014. Um, was it 24? Sorry, 2015. 2015, we did a Kickstarter. Um, our goal was to raise 30k. Um, we raised that in day one, and we. I ended up raising five times that by the time we were done. Um, thank goodness. Uh, and um, so that's kind of what started us on our path uh, to build Jewelbox. Okay. And so what, what is this? So I, it's a bracelet and it has mm -hmm. four infinite color LEDs and a yeah. button and Bluetooth. What, what's sort of inside it? Is, is this, is, and also, is this open hardware? Yeah, it's open hardware. Everything is on our GitHub. Um, so this is, we use a Nordic chip. Um, it's a microprocessor uh, that has a built-in Bluetooth antenna. It has uh, four RGB LEDs, like you said, a motor um, and a button. Um, and uh, all our firmware hardware is available online. Um, the Nordic chip that we use is really interesting. Uh, it allows for eight simultaneous, both central and peripheral relationships to happen at the same time. So Joelbots can talk to many other Joelbots or to your smart home or anything um, anything you put your mind to that is Bluetooth. Well, that's wow, now that's uh, getting this. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Aaron. Oh, I was just going to say, that's really cool. Um, how did you, I mean, this is so small. I mean, it, I, I do a lot with the, uh, the ESP8266, um, which is also pretty small. Um, how did you go about picking that particular microprocessor to use? This is actually a funny story. Uh, um, there was an excellent salesman. <laughs> <laughs> so we did, uh, we did a hardware accelerator called Highway One, um, based in San Francisco. Highway One is really awesome. Um, basically they give you seed funding for your company and they, um, set you up with mentors and help you build a prototype, which is great because my background isn't in hardware. Um, so they were really helpful with a lot of the things that we needed in order to be successful. Um, and we had a bunch of uh, chip uh, people associated with chip manufacturers come in and talk to us. The most exciting thing about this microprocessor to us was the ability to have so many uh, relationships at the same time. Having a friendship bracelet, you're going to have more than one friend. So we wanted to make sure that, that um, the way that looked was fairly seamless on the part of the user. Uh, so when I heard about this one, I mean, the TI has a chip that uh, uh, ha allows you to have three relationships at the same time. Uh, but this was the most uh, that I had heard about. What he didn't mention at the time is that the chip wasn't even yet in alpha uh, mm -hmm. and uh, wouldn't be for about a year and a half. So we got to go through the whole process with them of going through the alpha and the beta process of the chip. Um, finally being one of the first on the market to release it in a consumer product. Wow, that's really cool. I'm just looking at the specs for it right now. Um, I mean, how big is the watch actually? I mean, we, we should probably have, uh, we should probably take a look at the website. It's jewelbots.com, by the way, uh, if yes. you're curious. I mean, is it the size of a smartwatch or smaller? Uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit smaller smaller around than your Apple watch, but it's a little bit higher as well. Um, so it's a little bigger than a quarter. And how in the world are you able to fit everything in there that you, I mean, let's say, so you've got a button, you've got at least four LEDs, uh, you've got the microprocessor, you've got some, uh, some memory, I assume. And then you also have to fit a battery in there. It, what, what else am I missing? Man, I have, that's the music to my ears. Uh, no one actually knows how hard that was. <laughs> yeah, that's like impossible. <laughs> Most I mean, people are like, Can you make it smaller? And I'm like, do you know? Do you know? <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, it was it really difficult. So this is probably, uh, this is our eighth prototype. Um, we went through a lot of iterations. The... Uh, the most expensive thing about making this device actually is how small our copper pore needs to be in order to make uh, the PCB, um, the size of the PCB is very small. The height, most of the height is the battery. It's a rechargeable LiPo. Um, and, uh, and, that's, and that's what attributes to the, um, to the height. Uh, it was actually initially our last prototype before this one was a little bit larger 
And on my arm, it looked totally fine. When we started user testing with, it, t- it turns out young girls have tiny little arms. And so uh, if, we, if it gets much bigger than this, it kind of hangs over their wrist. So this was something we worked really hard to do to get so much stuff in here. Yeah, that's incredible. I mean, how, what what size? I'm just kind of I got to geek out for a second here. I mean, what size like you know resistors and and things are you using? Are you? All, are, I'm assuming they've got to be at least four hundred three, right? Yeah, those they are absurdly small. Um, I know uh, a lot of sizes, not our resistor sizes, but uh, the microprocessor itself is four millimeters by four millimeters. So right. I often say that um, if I ate it, I would have no idea. Yeah. Yeah, that is super Which tiny. No one, so, always, everyone always thinks that's a weird thing to say. So I don't know why I'm still saying it. No, but it's true. I mean, I mean, unless you've um, had some experience soldering these things, you have no idea. Like they disappear. Like where did it go? Because it's so tiny. 